Hey guys, welcome back to Magic Corp. Here we are once again on the site of Magic Hut Industries, and we have got a lot to do today, so let's just get started. Uh, we'll do a quick little refresh since it's been a actually a long time since I've recorded. I ended up having quite a backlog of video that I've been churning through, so it's been about six weeks since I've done anything in the map here. But as you can see, there have been some changes. I'm pretty sure that wasn't there last time. Um, that little floating platform is actually where I was doing a little bit with those uh, bloodwood trees that I found. Uh, that's basically a little block of netherrack up there, and I was growing some of those trees. Uh, they didn't give as much redstone as I'd hoped or remember them doing, so yeah. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to end up doing anything with that in the long run, but it is something I'm playing with. Over here, I have been playing with. Sorry. When I get excited, I stop enunciating. Over here, I've got a silverwood tree. I actually went on a little bit of an exploration and found myself a silverwood sapling. And I grew a tree here, and sure enough, it's got a node inside. Look at that. So, yeah, I've been doing that, too. Uh, unfortunately, and you might have seen this in the last episode, in the in reviewing the footage, I noticed this, too. But unfortunately, dear jalapeno is no longer and I might have mentioned that before I cannot remember it's been so long since I've recorded so I'm gonna have to get some more uh, blazes eventually but for now I've got enough blaze powder so yeah uh, unfortunately also all of my cows have, have gone away and I think it's because of the the massive spawning that happens every seven days I, I took out my cow and I think maybe they got in there and had some sort of cage bar with jalapeno I'm not entirely sure what happened and let's see, what else has been going on? Uh, well, of course, I built this. Just a little kind of open air, not, uh, you know, glass ceiling hut. Very nice nice amount of light inside. I like really kind of like the open feel of it. It's, it's pretty simple and it's good as a temporary structure. I've got my new wall of focus using the RF tools boards up here. Again, I know it's technology, but they just work so much better for me. And as you can see, I've already started populating it. I've actually got a lot more stuff to do, but I ran out of iron a couple of times and I just it takes so much iron to make the modules that I'm just gonna be making them as I have a chance and while we are at this structure if we look down here I've got a little Thomcraft area started uh, I wanted a nice big area for Thomcraft because I do know I'm gonna have to make like a uh, whatever that the sh shrine thing is called the altar that you use to create things as well as uh, a bunch of alchemy stuff so uh, a nice area I'll probably actually expand this because I'm going to need a lot more area than I think I've actually got down here for that altar and as you can see over here I've started my nether warp th nether wart farm I've had a couple of harvests I won't harvest that right now but just so you can see that I've got a nice little nether warp farm going so yeah been kind of busy and oh other thing that I did, I used what I learned from that tree farm over there to make a little sugarcane farm. Uh, it's it's out of mana right now. I actually was actually ferrying the mana over here manually, uh, but I'm not going to need sugarcane in a while. I don't want to accidentally pick that up, so I'm kind of skirting it because I've got uh, 3,300 sugarcane from this farm. And if you're wondering why I did it this way, which is uh, I've got it so that it takes off everything at the bottom. It's collected and then distributed and then planted with a random carpus. I know that I could actually take it off one up. However, because of the, uh, the the crop freezing bug, which does still happen because the my workaround is actually these melons and those pumpkins there. And what unsticks the chunk is a block update. And a block update happens when I farm my melons and I farm my pumpkins. That actually forces this chunk that this farm is in to update. Uh, so by cutting these off at the ground level and then replanting them, that's actually forcing an update uh, and which allows them to continue to grow even if I'm not around to unstick the, the chunk. So that actually is in the same chunk as the farm. So that actually keeps the farm ticking over too. So that's why I did it that way. Uh, normally it's actually better to just take it off at the, the middle. That way you don't have to bother with the, the Ranacarpus or the, the provider that I've got set up over there. As far as that provider, if you want to know how to make that, I've got a tutorial out on exactly how to make that provider, so go ahead and check that out. I put it out a couple weeks ago now, so I'll try to remember to link that in the description for you guys. Oh, okay, so that's my introduction. So what are we doing today? Well, the first thing we should do is do a mail check, because I should have another another order coming to me as well as a payment. So let's see what we got here. Oh, that's a four clipboards. Okay, so what we got? Let's check out our backpack first. That's my payment, so that should be going into the... Yeah, I got a portable tank with some more Infinibux in it, and I got some Infinibux here, and another clip contracting update clipboard. So let's take all that out of the backpack. We will stash this backpack in a handy-dandy tool. 
use that later to descend on its way. All right, so let's check out this contracting update. Uh, dear Mr. Mage, now that you've cut your teeth on a small handful of contracts and have done so in a timely manner, it is time to really get to work. Ooh, that sounds good. Uh, I've been fishing the magical seas for better and more profitable contracts and have established a rapport with several mages and magical businesses who are chomping at the bit for your goods. Starting immediately, you will be provided five contracts at a time with higher values than previous contracts. Also, I may have slightly exaggerated your product line and production facilities to your new clients. I trust you will rise to the occasion. Collinsworth. Oh. Well, um, okay, well, that's good news, I'd say. So that's probably why I got four contracts in here. That will bring me up to five. Okay. So, uh, let's, let's see what we got here. We've got one for Sorcerer's Arsenal. Uh, 13 Rod of the Plentiful Mantle for 140. 15,000 Infinibucks. Oh, oh, man. Okay, Rod of the Plentiful Mantle. What are, what's Rod of the Plentiful Mantle? Let's see what that's all. Ooh, mana diamonds in each. So I need 13 mana diamonds. Oh, 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 oh. okay, so now this is where things start getting really expensive. <laughs> okay, so uh, let's head over here to my my wall of focus real quick because I actually did set up an area for contracts I of course don't have any modules to handle this right now but I've just been keeping my contracts in this chest here and I'm gonna be keeping my contract orders on this side of the wall of focus so everything here will be uh, things that I need to, to build or to automate so I'll work on that as I get more modules to kind of flesh that out so sorcerers arsenal that's gonna be let's put them over on this side so I remember to off camera put them out there. So let's see, we've got Enchanted Excavations, 188 Thaumium Ingots for 66,000 Infinibucks. Boy, <laughs> Gallensworth wasn't kidding when he said these are going to be worth a lot more. Uh, they're also going to be harder to uh, to fulfill, I can see. What do we got here? Uh, Rasputin, 8x Vial of Shielding and 47 Runes of Autumn for 45,000 Infinibucks. Okay, for Rasputin. Don't know what he wants to do with, with all that, but um, I'm sure it's fine. Oh, and the Merlin Shop, Bar and Grill again. And they want uh, four glimmering flowers of the red variety, 47 mana in a bottle, and at, whoa, 2,400 mana glass? F all for 10,000 infinite. Holy moly. Uh, do I actually want to do that? I, I can refuse contracts. That's not a lot of money, and that's going to be a lot of work. Uh, but at the same time, it will give me a, a chance to start exercising some automation to make that mana glass, because ultimately that actually won't be too expensive. I can make mana glass out of essentially nothing. Hmm. So, okay, so I've got a lot of work ahead of me, I, I can see. Uh, this is just a, a junk clipboard, so I'll throw that in the tools thing. Uh, okay, so, hmm. I'm definitely going to have to reprioritize here uh, toward doing some automation and some other things. Uh, boy, I really need to get these up here so I have a more, a, a more better, a better idea of what I need to do. Uh, but we'll, we'll cover that later, because before I can even get into that kind of automation, because it, it is going to be increasingly important that I get things automated so that when people come to my company asking for things, I can actually just provide them right away rather than having to build a system to make them. Uh, well, well, you know, for now I'll be building systems to make them, but ideally I would like to have some sort of stock that I can just pull from. Uh, but anyway... Uh, so I need to get a, a solid source of mana together, which is what we were working on. So I think this this line item here, automate endo flames. I think that's what we're going to work on today. I think that's going to be our big project for the day. I actually don't have that much time to record, so that's probably going to be it. And then I've got a little bit of extracurricular stuff that I want to do. Uh, so in order to do that, what we basically have to do is turn this little tree farm. First, we need to speed it up because it takes too too long for these trees to grow uh, I've got it set to 15 minutes right now and it could honestly probably go up to, to 20 because uh, only about half the time is it actually growing a tree in that 15 minutes so what I need to do is I need to uh, build uh, a handful of floating agri carnations and sprinkle them around this tree so that it grows it a lot faster um, from my memory, I think four agricarnations grow an oak sapling in about two to three minutes. So I should be able to cut my time in a quarter, which will really get my wood flowing. Uh, so I need to get some agricarnations together to first speed this up. And then after we speed that up, and I'll kind of talk as I work here, I should have all the materials together for making the agricarnation. I think that's what this stuff all is. I, I set this all up 
literally like a month ago, and I do not remember. I, I don't remember what <laughs> what half of this stuff is or what I was doing. So we're just gonna kind of play it by ear here. So uh, agricarnation, and that is yes, two lime, a green, a yellow, a rune of spring, and a, a redstone root. And how much did I plan for? Mm, I think I wanted four. I didn't want just. I just want, didn't want just two, so uh, we're going to need to... Well, we'll start with maybe making two. I can always make a couple more off-screen later. Uh, and then I'm also going to need... Are they in here? No. Let's check my thing, because I'm also going to need to make some floating flowers. So I'm going to need the pasture grass seeds and some dirt, which I can get over there. And then I'm going to need some flowers. Actually, I need glimmering flowers, don't I? Let's check my flower patch. I might have some in there. Uh, I got three blacks, so we'll just take two of those out, and that should be good. Okay, so now we need to make those glimmering, and then we need to make them floating, and then we can put together all of our floating agricarnations. Alright, so we got our glimmering flowers, now it's time to build ourselves a couple of these agricarnations. So we're going to need a couple of seeds real quick. Grab two of those, and then it should be, what was it, two limes, a green, a yellow, a root, a root of spring. Is that it? Yeah, there we go. And then one of these guys. And I did not bring my bucket. Uh, do I have a bucket in here? Yes, I do. Okay, so then we'll fill that back up. And the thing that I've been forgetting to do is that I can just right-click the ingredients in there, as long as there's water in it and it's been less than 60 seconds. Uh, I always forget to do that. So here we go. Okay, so now we've got our two agricarnations, and what we'll do is we'll just combine those with the floating black flowers to make floating agricarnations. Is that our agricarnation? Yeah, agricarnation. Never remember if I'm saying names right. All right, so if we put one like there, we put one here, that should both be close enough that they, let's make sure that they're bound to the right pool. They should be bound to the one underneath, yes. This one is very likely to be as well. Yep, okay. So then they should be bone mealing this tree every so often. So let's give it a, a quick look here. Yep, there they go. So, so they are acting on that tree. Two of them is probably like a five-minute turnaround. I won't mess with the timing and stuff uh, quite yet. All right, so we got the agricarnations in here. Now what do we need to do? Well, the thing that we need to do now, and that's that's kind of important, is that we basically have to take this amaranth drawer that's full of the wood, and we need to start processing that into charcoal and then moving that charcoal over to here. And that, I think, is going to be a combination of using a little bit of railcraft and I'm just Batania. Uh, so to get started with that, we we need to do is build ourselves a, so we need to build ourselves some exo flames. Actually, before even that, what we need to do is be able to move. Is my is my oh I was gonna say is my ho hopper hot gun? Um, we need to be able to move this drawer, and to do that, we need packing tape. And I think I've got everything I need to make packing tape. I think it's just I should put my stuff back in my drawer. Uh, packing tape. What packing tape does is it makes it so you can pick up the drawer. So just paper and a slime ball. So that should be pretty easy to make. I'm going to clean up my inventory here a little bit and then I will be right back. Alright, with this I get my last rune of summer. And as you can see, a rune of summer is two pieces of sand, a slime ball, a melon slice, and then an air and an earth rune, which, thanks to the changes, we get back. As you can see, I've got this little chest over here. I've actually been using this to... Oop, that doesn't go in there. To hold... Uh, copies of my various runes for, you know, using in the altar to make other runes. Uh, so, while we're by the house, I wanted to uh, mention something that I'm going to start doing here, and that is I'm going to be starting to hold back some of my pay. As you can see, I can turn the blocks into the actual Infinibox ingots. Uh, and by that I mean I'm going to be splitting how much I, I put into my debt system and how much I keep for myself because I do want to start keeping some so that I can purchase some of those licenses. I don't want to keep having to go further and further into debt. So I think if I make sure that half of it gets into the debt machine and half of it I start saving for myself, I'll start to be able to collect enough money to start buying some licenses. So just want to let you know, guys know that I'm doing that. Uh, again, my I think the next license I want to try to get is Chromatic Craft, since there's a lot of Chromatic Craft stuff around here, and I kind of do want to start in on that. It takes a while to do, from what I understand. Uh, but I will. Um, I'm going to take a quick sleep here, and then I'll meet you guys over in the uh, magic shop. All right, so here we are back over in the magic shop. I got to grip my bucket, and then we can start 
start making ourselves some exo flames. I don't think I need the wand to do this, but I'm going to need four seeds. One, two, three, four. Pull those out of there. All right, so that should be that should be good. So if we put all our stuff in here, let's see. The it is two reds, I believe. Nope, that's not the button, Taco. Two reds. Is that going in? That is going in. Two red. Can I have the bucket back? Thank you. Two reds, a uh, gray, light gray, and then what is it? A uh, rune of fire and a rune of summer? Is that it? Yeah, that's it. And then throw the seeds in. Awesome. So that's our first exo flame. And got to remember the right click trick. There we go. And we can do these pretty quick that way. Kind of nice having this little sink there. And there's the last one. All right, so now we've got four exo flames. And if you take the, these four exo flames, we'll just turn them into floating exo flames real quick. All right, so now we've got four floating exo flames. Now, I forgot that I was going to make the chest movie thingy. <sighs> Dog was not that smart. All right, so finally made my packing tape. I'm sorry I kind of broke in mid-stride there. You know what? I think I'm going to steal this stuff over here because I'm going to need some of it. And I don't know that I've got enough. I don't think I've got enough iron to make the hoppers that I'm going to otherwise need to pull this off. Uh, what I am going to need is another chest of some kind. I think I've got one in furniture. Yes. Got an improved chest in furniture. We can... I'm going to re-rig this a little bit later, but for now this will give us a good idea of what we're doing. Okay, so the first thing we need to do in order to get this thing making charcoal is to first move this amaranth drawer. There we go, amaranth drawer. So with it like that, we can use the axe to pick it up, and it comes up as a piece. We'll also pull this hopper hawk up. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to move this kind of up into the air so that it can feed a furnace. But I think we're going to start this from the bottom up, because where we want to... Because ultimately, what we, what we want to have happen is that we want the charcoal to end up in this chest, like so. In fact, we may want that chest one up from the ground even further than that. Or two up from the ground even further than that. Hmm. Hmm, because I don't want to have to move this thing. You know what? It's going to be better, actually, if we start on this end and move backwards, I think. Yeah. Well, let's think about what we want to do here. Because what I want to do, uh, ultimately, is get the charcoal out of whatever this is into a rail system that's going to be down here. The rail system will be moving it over here and then f uh, coming up and then feeding it into a dropper that will then put the items down here. So if we build it that way, then we know that we actually want this chest up two more from where it is because we want to put a hopper under it. So let's put down a block. We've got some living rock on us, so what I want to do is we want to put down a block, and then on top of that block, we're going to put our first hopper, and then we'll just pick up this here, and then on top of this, we want to put our chest. All right. Oop. Okay, so that's going to be where our charcoal is going. So essentially, what we'll have down here is some sort of departure set up for our. Uh, for our minecart, which will then send it over that way. So that should work. And then what we gotta do, then, is then feed this hopper into there, and then this furnace needs to go... Oh, that's right, I can't fly, can I? Hmm. Used to doing tutorials. I just, just did a whole bunch of them, and I was like, I can just fly. Put this up here. Okay, so then we gotta get the wood into this furnace. I honestly don't know if I can use a hopper hawk just to put the wood right in the furnace. Let's try that. Where's our hopper hawk? I just picked it up. Oh, there it is. Okay. So we put our hopper hawk here. We'd have to use an item frame to make sure nothing untoward goes in there. So if I throw a piece of coal, like there, is that going to get picked up into the... Oh, it is. Now, will it... Hmm. How will I make sure that it goes in the top one? Is it? Is it sided like the other thing? Do I have to put the hopper hawk on top, maybe? Hmm, I've never done, I've never actually tried this before. I've never actually done anything quite like this. Let's try putting the hopper hawk on top and see if it's sided. If not, I can just make another. Uh, I can make myself another uh, hopper and put it up on top. I'm hoping that it'll be able to grab a piece of wood that's all the way on the floor. Hopper hawks, when they're powered, have quite quite a long range, so it shouldn't be a problem. 
All right, so let's put the hopper hawk just right on top and see if it, I don't think that they can feed down. Come on, but I might be wrong. Okay, so charcoal. Oh, it does work. Oh, that is fabulous. All right, so that's gonna be our setup. So what this is doing, as you can see, is the hopper hawk picks up whatever, puts it in the furnace, the furnace is gonna cook it, put it in the chest, and then the chest is gonna feed it downwards. That is actually quite quite a bit simpler than it, it could have been if I needed to involve extra hoppers. So now I just got to get an item frame on this thing and get it going. Now, unfortunately, I've got all this wood trapped in this amaranth drawer. And ideally, now that I'm thinking about it, I do want to keep having this amaranth drawer because uh, once this, I'm going to create a feedback in the system that'll keep it from, that was an awesome jump. Did you see how I just nailed that jump? I need some dirt or something. Wait a minute, I have dirt. What am I doing here? So actually I'm rethinking this. This is actually, it's quite good to know that I could do this and it would work. Uh, however, I am gonna want the ability to, we're getting to a point here now where I'm beginning to get nervous because to a certain point, I'm not gonna be able to pick up the logs if I put my hopper hawk too high, but I want this amaranth drawer to be up above this furnace and feeding into it. Wait, is there a, oh, see, still working. That actually is going to just sit on the ground for now. Uh, hmm, gotta think about this a second. Is there a, is there a hopper upgrade for storage drawers? I know it's got a whole bunch of upgrades. Is there a hopper one? Creative vending, creative storage. Not looking like it, unfortunately. Not obviously, anyway. Hmm. Okay. Uh, we're going to have to cut here because I'm going to need to make myself another another hopper. All right. So I went back and got my stuff and put everything back down. And unfortunately, my concerns turned out to be quite true. This hopper hawk can't actually reach the logs if they fall down into there. And unfortunately, I don't know that there's that I can completely cover this area. I can, I think I can cover a little bit of it. Let's just, because if I can get it so that it's unlikely for the, put stuff there. If I, if I throw the wood down just here, can I pick it up? Yeah, it looks like it. Was that, I think that was the hopper hawk that grabbed it. Yeah, okay. So I'm gonna have to kind of re, vamp this a little bit I think to make it so that it's unlikely for this stuff to fall down I think if I put a leaf block here it will actually still shoot through to this pool so I think that's gonna be I think that's gonna be the real trick is to wait I've got a silk touch so if we grab some leaves I use my bow yeah if we put some leaves here that'll keep trees from falling down in there and it should still be able to fire through that into the pool there and then that was that was also smart. Wow, I'm I'm doing good. Uh, if I put leaves there, I think nope, the redstone can't go through. So, okay, so that, I'm gonna occasionally lose logs down this hole. I don't think there's anything I can do about that. Well, I could build up, right? Yeah. Yeah, if I build up. So if I do that, that should actually prevent logs from falling down that hole. Uh, this hole might be kind of a loss. I don't think they're actually going to fall down there, so I think that's actually going to be good. It's not the most attractive. I'll come back and, and do that a little bit better in a way that I can. Uh, but that should keep the wood high enough that this hopper hawk should be able to grab it and put it in this storage drawer. So as you can see, we're filling up our hopper. It's probably already filled up the furnace. Good. So now what we need to do is put down our... Where did they go? Floating exoflames. Now, the cool thing about exoflames is that the more of them that you put down, the more efficient they work. And this is something that I actually learned from Jancy. And he did a whole video on them. I will link it in the description. It is a very informative video on how these things work. Uh, but uh, the quick takeaway story, um, can I link those to, to there? Yes, I can. So we want that to that guy yeah we want everything into this pool because that's our, our primary primary pool but anyway so basically he went through all the numbers and kind of figure out how these things work and how to make them efficient 
for powering a furnace. So uh, four of them like this is far more efficient than if I were using coal to generate, uh, or sorry, to use coal just to make the, the, the charcoal out of the oak wood. So this is pretty efficient. And then I did my own testing off screen using uh, Jancy's research as a springboard point and found out that if you use it two exoflames, it will run off of a tree setup just like this. So you only need two. I'm going to do four just because it's a little more efficient, gives me uh, more wiggle room and stuff. So yeah. So this is a, a nice setup. So that now we should be filling this up with charcoal, which we are. Awesome. So we can actually add, we can add our charcoal to this. Okay, so now we need to get the other portion. I need to grab another leaf block to replace the one that I smushed. So we'll put this down here. Good. Uh, okay, so before we move on to the next part, I think I'm going to take a quick sleep.